Three books in January that I read that just so happened to be released in January. Starting with Hellbent, this is the sequel to Ninth House, which talking about that real quick, I did enjoy Ninth House when it first came out. It follows uh, Galaxy or Alex Stern, and I really, really loved her character by the end of the book. I specify by the end because for the first half at least, I was so annoyed with the characters and plot and pacing of this book because to me she felt very flat. Oh, I am the typical dark moody, I have a tragic backstory, woe is me, I'm snarky. It just felt a little bit more on the cliche side to me at first. I don't know when it was, but at some point there was a turning point and I'm just like, oh, I love this character. I love Alex more than anything else. She is very complex. She is snarky. She is protective. Uh, she's spiteful. She can be driven by revenge and anger, but she's protective. Um, yeah, no, loved her character by the end. And of course there was the golden boy darling or Darlington. Yeah. And, um, no, loved him in the interludes of when we got him little snippets of what he was like and his love of Leafy and his home and magic in general and quest for knowledge. Yes, no, loved all of that, loved the characters by the end and by the end the plot had gripped me. I was excited to see where the story went going into Hellbent. I still loved all these characters. Uh, I loved uh, Daz and the police detective. I loved uh, the roommates. Like as all the characters that were introduced in the previous book and that we met in this book, I loved them all. I did. However, the plot itself was lacking to me. I'm going to stick with the positives for Hellbent for just a second longer. We get exploration on the world and the magic and the creatures and demons. And I love that idea and exploration and just expanding of the world. Yes, love that element of the book. But the plot itself, my God, I would have cut slash reworked the first 240 pages of this book. Because it was so, it shouldn't be a spoiler if you're watching it. They're trying to get to hell and do a ritual. Oh, it fails. All right, let's do another ritual. Oh, it fails. And we're, it's so rapid fire plot beats that we're not exploring the consequences of this and what's happening. And it feels like a national treasure hunt because... Uh, characters don't know what to do next, so they talk to this other character, and character can't just exposition dump what they have to do, but they phrase a clue, like a single word or two words in the conversation, and then there's so many eureka moments, like, oh, this is actually a reference to this, because in ancient Egypt, this meant this, and then now we have to go do this path, so the characters that we're following exposition dump the explanation for what they have to do and how to open a portal to hell. And I'm just like, cool. I'm, I'm bored. I'm bored with this plot. Uh, there were plenty of twists. Many of them you could see coming. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I got to say. Again, I love the characters. I love the world. I just did not enjoy the plot of this. Two feels like National Treasure Hunt. Um not exploring consequences, too rapid fire in terms of plot beats, just really would have restructured 200 pages of the beginning because the ending was fine. I'm excited to see what happens now at the ending in the next book, but yeah, middle book syndrome, not a fan of the actual plot of this one. Um, moving into the next book that I read, just the nicest couple. Um, I'm obsessed. This is a new favorite thriller of all time. And a lot of people are going to say it is boring, slow, anticlimactic, and just a complete dud. I can see these critiques coming. They are not wrong. Um, I just loved it. It played right into my anxiety. I loved every single page. I binged it. I fell asleep reading this book and had to, and woke up at like, two or three o'clock in the morning, realizing I had fallen asleep with this book on my lap. And I'm just like, oh, I, sh I should go to bed. Or I can finish the this last chapter because I, I need to know what happened. And so I had to backtrack a little bit and then finish, finish off the book. And I have no regrets. It was perfect. So you have these two couples. So um, husband, wife, uh, husband goes missing. Wife is looking for husband. Other couple um, have a secret about concerning husband and they are 
all this time trying not to get caught and sh not let them know that they had interacted with the husband and um, hiding their involvement. And you see their relationship and constantly thinking, how do we not let on to our friends, the wife who was asking us questions and trying to figure out what's going on. And then you have the police somewhat getting involved and oh my God, the anxiety. And it is all this build up. It's build up and build up and build up trying to figure out what happened to this husband and what the truth is and what happened to him and where he is. And then the ending, the fallout of the consequences of everything is basically off page. You go from a little bit of clip of, okay, we've pieced all the all of it together and normally someone would monologue and fill in all the gaps, but we skip that part and now we're just in an epilogue of this is what happened after the fallout and we don't see the fallout. And for me, no big deal because it was so anxiety ridden for the buildup that I did not care at all. Once I had that, once I knew what happened, I'm like, I'm done. That's all I need it. I don't need another hundred pages on the consequence of everything or even another 50 or 20 odd pages. Didn't need it. They jumped right to the epilogue and I'm like, oh, that's where everyone ended up afterwards. Cool. I love this book. I love this book so, so very much. Uh, the last book that I read in January was uh, Finley Donovan Jumps the Gun. And I had not read a single one of the books in this series before, um, the day before this one came out. And I'm like, you know what, let me start this series and it'll probably take me the entire month of February to get caught up just to read those two books. I'm not the biggest fan of the quirky, funny kind of thrillers. They're good for occasion, but I'm not really going to binge the book and I'm not going to uh, read its sequel right away. No, so it's probably going to take me a long time to get to that third book. I read the first two books in this series in less than 24 hours because as soon as I started the first book, I'm like, eh, not the greatest, but I got the audiobook. Let me clean my apartments and I'll get into it. By the 50 point, 50 percent point mark, I was hooked. I needed to know everything that was going on. It was hilarious. And then as soon as that book wrapped up, I'm like, it ended in a way that I'm like, I need the sequel this second. So I finished the second book, the first and second book, the day before the third book came out. So when the third book came out, Finley Diamond Jumps the Gun, I was like, I'm reading this today. And sadly, it was a little disappointing in comparison to the first two books. So the premise of this is Finley Donovan is an author. She gets mistaken for a hitman when discussing the plot of one of her novels to her agent. And things snowball and there's... It gets ridiculously overdramatic and unrealistic and things just get worse and worse for her as one terrible thing leads to another terrible thing leads to another terrible thing. There's comedy, there's dark humor, there is a wonderful uh, roommate uh, slash babysitter slash accountant who is helping her out and is very invested in her love life and it's hilarious and wonderful and I recommend the series. But the third book, it's not as dramatic. There's not as many this leads to this leads to this over the top hilarity. Um, it's more Finley Donovan now and Vera is in a police academy for civilian police academy kind of thing. Just get a feel what cops do. And it's really boring there. So I like the section of the book that took place before it where we get a little bit of the consequences, consequences for the previous book in terms of gambling issues and um, a loan shark guy coming to collect a debt. But I really wanted it to lean more into the mob style element. So the first two books did a good job setting up this mob boss. And I had really, really hoped that um, Finley and Vera would have like had to pretend or at least use his name more saying, hey, we're working for this guy and that's going to lead to them infiltrating say the Atlantic City Loan Shark people and it would just get hilarious and maybe we actually would be working alongside of some of this uh, mob boss's men. But that never happened and it was kind of disappointing. Instead, we're in a police academy, we're investigating who this second hitman could be 
And while the mysteries in the previous book really set me up to think that, oh, I really like how this mystery is being set up. I want to know the second hitman. I'm very invested. The payoff in this third book just wasn't doing it for me. I did not like the payoff at all. Uh, it could also have something to do with the romance elements of um, Finley Donovan series is my least favorite element. And the fact that we're following the romance with the cop, Nick, I'm not going to be invested in a romance with a cop. I'm not. Uh, yeah, no, hate it, that element. And I'm like, can we get to the other part? I'd rather follow the romance with the ex-husband that I obviously hate and don't want them to get back together. But it's more interesting than the cop. Definitely would rather it be the lawyer or introduce another one for all I care. I just don't like this one. Um, overall, just it was a real letdown compared to the first two. Maybe it has something to do with the fact that I binged these three books in like less than 48 hours, but not as funny, not as over dramatic, not as entertaining. Can't overly say anything else than that. I'm still invested in the series. I will read the fourth book when it comes out. But that is all I got for these three books that I've read in January. More or less had a fun time with all of them. I will um, talk to you later.